Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Paulus. And this is Up Your Arts. The <laughs> podcast which explores how the arts can enrich your life. Uh, and we have Keith. Oh, um, you're right, <laughs> Keith. How did you get here today, Keith? Car. Oh, is it an electric car, your car? Yeah. No, it's should be. Is it hybrid? It's diesel. It's diesel. <laughs> Good God. Do you know it was 2020? Did you not get the memo? <laughs> Do you know, my husband came and picked me up from uh, pantomime on our last day of panto um, on New Year's Eve. And I was just like, come, I'm getting in the car, bomb me home to my sofa before it gets too late, you know, and New Year's Eve gets weird. And he hired an electric car, fully electric car for the first time. And they said um, 150 miles worth of charge is what the car has. But they didn't say, please bear in mind that heating the car or putting the radio on, you know, takes up charge. So anyway, you had to stop on the motorway for an hour whilst it charged which he hadn't factored in so it was an hour late to put me up and I was like I've been away from home for a month going where the hell is that? <laughs> I can imagine you stood on the door uh, on the pavement with like still in, a, still in an ugly sister outfit okay. yeah going furious <laughs> yeah. Yes. so that, oh. I'm just right now at the beginning of the year um, I'm just delighted to be in my home quite a lot because I was away for a whole month what's happening with you Emily? Um, well next weekend um, we're going to do a craftanoon at my flat. What is a craftanoon, please? So, and can I say craftanoon because I'm from Kent? Yes, yeah, so you can say craft. Craft. It doesn't sound as good. I have to say. <laughs> what is it? Um, well, people just pop around my flat with uh, a little project um, if they're working on for a costume. Um, uh, mind you, I'm probably going to try and finish the dress that I started making months ago. What's with, the dress for? Uh, just to make a dress. Oh. <laughs> I'm learning to sew. Oh, okay. So it's not for stage? Not for stage, no. Um, maybe if I get good at it, I might attempt a costume. But at the moment, I'm using um, an old duvet um, and turning it into clothing at the moment. <laughs> well, I saw something like that on Facebook. There's a woman that uses old duvets to make dungarees and she repurposes oh. old denim jackets that she's bought in charity shops and uh, or lots of cartoon prints um, children's duvets she uses yeah. yeah are you becoming one of those people uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> see how the crafting is yeah see how the crafting in goes we've done a couple um, before it's mainly students um, so uh, yeah and usually just before their showcase as well so they get to um, uh, so Trixie will come along and teach how to make your own nipple pasties. Trixie. Tassels. Oh, who's Trixie Tassels? Tell me. Oh. As if I didn't know. <laughs> no, as if you didn't know. You've never met her before, have you? <laughs> <laughs> For the listeners. For the listeners, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so she teaches um, the course with me. Oh. She teaches the burlesque course with me. I so. didn't know that was always a thing. I thought she was sort of a guest that came in sometimes. Um, yes, yeah, so she usually teaches at least four of the classes yeah. um, with me. Uh, the beginners, um, she does less on the advanced, but um, on the beginners, um, yeah, she teaches bumps and grinds and um, routine development um, and uh, choreography. Uh, so, yeah, so she re- it's really great. She's m- much fun, and she makes the most amazing um, nipple tassels as well. They're very well structured, got great base. <laughs> it's like well, good that, for your tassel twirling. I presume that will be part of the craft noon. Yes, yeah, 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 and we do a lot of gemming. There's uh, a lot of rhinestones. So poor Mr. Delicious in the flat has uh, has to contend with a lot of glue and uh, rhinestones around the flat when the craft noon happens. Which you just introduced, introduced yourself as Emily, but we should say you're uh, also known as Little Lady, Lady Luscious. Luscious. Yes. And yep. your husband has become... Mr. Delicious. Yeah. Not yeah. Mr. Luscious, interestingly. No, because no, people used to call because people used to call him Little Lord Luscious. <laughs> and he hated horrible. it. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. It was just like, yeah, it does kind of have that feeling of Little Lord Fauntleroy yes, about it, does, it, doesn't yeah. it? It's horrible. Um, so yeah, he didn't like that. And then I did a, uh, when I was stage managing Art of Drag for Michael, um, he asked me to drag up and he called me Little Lord Luscious that night. So it kind of was like, well... I can use it as my drag name if I want. So, um, uh, so yes. So a friend of ours always, um, Dolores Deluxe. Yeah, I know Dolores Deluxe, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so a mutual friend, um, Dolores Deluxe, uh, always get, gets my stage name wrong. Oh, I see. She always called Little Miss Delicious or something um, along those lines. So when she met Alex for the first time, 
And she said, so are you Mr. Delicious then? (laughs) (laughs) And he was called that for the rest of the night. And the next day I said, did you like that? He was like, yes, I'm Mr. Delicious. (laughs) So that's how he has a stage name even. Oh, well, he has now been on stage. Now, um, Dolores Delaps actually has a really great story about getting names wrong. And it's not her in the story, but she tells it. Do you know this story about Christian Lee getting someone's name wrong? So Christian Lee's another cabaret host like myself and Dolores. And uh, she, uh, she tells this great story because Christian's memory is awful and and one of the few things you need to have as a, a as a cabaret host or a compare is to at least remember people's names two minutes after you've just looked at a sheet of paper and uh, and go on stage to introduce them but bless Christian he's fantastic but he's not very good at that <laughs> and uh, he was introducing uh, Ruby de Zabie, I believe is how you say oh, her yes. name, uh, who's a very well-known burlesque performer on the London circuit and I, I believe what came out of his mouth that day was a uh, please welcome to the stage the Dalai Lama <laughs> I don't, know, don't know where he got, how he got from Ruby to Xavier to the Dalai Lama, but he did. And the, uh, somebody else with two names is our yes. guest. Yeah. Emily, who is this woman? This is Storm in a teacup. And she basically keeps Lush's cabaret going. <laughs> she keeps you on time, yeah. keeps me on time, um, keeps the show going. And um, she's just a fabulous human being as well. No. I, I am formidable. <laughs> <laughs> you are. But um, uh, we need to get something out. I, I, I recently found out that the two of you dislike the phrase stage kitten. Yeah. And I didn't actually know this and I've been calling you, you, you it. You did. I, 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 I have sh- told you before. Oh, did I? <laughs> Was I not listening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Can, can you tell me why you don't like stage kitten? As a, This is a term that's sort of b- b- grown up in the burlesque community for some reason about actual, actually it's stage managing, isn't it? I, I think having watched a lot of stage, very poor stage management <laughs> in uh, the cabaret world, it's sort of, I think for me, there's a separation. Are you picking up knickers or are you running a show? Right. And I think that for me is where that... Um, sort of lies okay so a stage kitten's not necessarily running the entire show whereas when I do it I run the tech rehearsal I keep everyone to time I um you know I'm even telling the host what to do um as <laughs> I was taught to. <laughs> by <laughs> little lady <Lettuce>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's taught me everything I know <laughs> I, 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 I'm invested in trying to find something uh, quirky and interesting because I don't want to say stage manager, but 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 not go with kitten anymore. I'm totally <laughs> invested in that. But for people that are, are going, oh, what on earth is going on here? Because uh, I think if mm. people understand the idea of a stage manager from theatre, they would just be maybe uh, never seen on stage or if they were seen briefly, just be wearing all black. But yeah. in our community, cabaret and burlesque, the stage manager is, uh, you know, is a personality and is seen and is dressed up like everybody else. Yeah. And that's different to theatre, isn't it? It is. Um, I think it would be quite hard to be invisible when you have to run on in between each act, (laughs) clear the stage and then set the stage for the next act. So you might have props for them. You might have you may even have to come and step in and do something during their performance. Sometimes they'll say, can I give you my coat? I don't want it to touch the floor. Or can I Mm. can you come and help me with this? Sometimes you're even part of the act. You know, can you be the gentleman who... um, brings me to the stage or whatever so there are lots of different roles you may be part of the act itself and we don't have for the most part in the cabaret world we just don't have the well we don't have the budget or the venues to for you know a complete blackout whilst you know uh, or curtain goes down whilst a set gets changed it's all happening in front of your eyes while the host is hopefully being vaguely entertaining (laughs) (laughs) and it's also informal as well that you end up having you, 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 the stage manager needs to have a personality about it. It would be very dull if you were just in black, sort of running around like, no one look at me. Um, you sort of end up, it's a bit more interesting if there's a bit of banter between the host or 
that something along those lines. Well, and you know, it's taken us a few months, but I think we've we found <laughs> something. It's <laughs> sort of love hate or hate hate relationship on stage, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very inappropriate and rude, and you just about managed not to hit me. That's kind of. I still, when we have a guest host for Luscious, I nearly always end up mentioning the time that you just came on and spilled like a cup full of <laughs> flour or whatever it was on the stage without warning me. <laughs> I did, yeah. As I was setting up the next. Yeah, I did do that. You're right, yeah. and, and it's and it's the sort of thing I hate in performers not prepping because, of course, I I need to know how much material I yeah. I've got to say and to be effortlessly witty. While you and of course Emily, you've done this job too. You know, are, are, yeah. are, are actually making the show work and and the next and things ready for the next act. So I I know how annoying that <laughs> is, and I don't know. I, I mean, I think I do know what came over. I think it was wine that came over me <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's actually a tremendously annoying thing to do to somebody it was very crappy of me <laughs> I, Michael when he used to host uh, Lotus the only time he used to make a mess on the stage was when I wasn't there that month so um, I was away <laughs> and he did this is Michael Twaits, Twaits who was another guest on, a, on another episode recently and uh, yeah so he had an umbrella oh. that he filled with glitter and he uh, and Basically, you opened up and showered the whole stage with glitter, and he never did that at Luscious Kevin. I think that was me. And, yeah. and he hadn't pre warned me, <laughs> and I was fuming. <laughs> yes, I think that was me. And I saw the pictures afterwards, and I was like, oh, you did that act? He said, yeah, when else was I going to do it? With? <laughs> no, you wouldn't have let me. <laughs> You, it's always really funny when you go and watch a show because you know when something's happened that the stage manager wasn't expecting. It happens all the time at Luscious. I'll be watching it and suddenly you see me run off to get a broom. <laughs> or like, suddenly, I haven't got enough blue roll here. I need more tissue to clean up whatever's just happened. And it really, I do, for performers definitely put it on your notes and don't try and downplay as well when they say oh there'll be a small amount of glitter and then you look at it and <laughs> it's everywhere yeah. and you haven't managed to plan that with the host yet who's backstage mm -hmm. so then the host comes forward and is you know really sure oh right. gosh I've got this to fill for quite some time because <laughs> yeah. the other really important thing I didn't say the stage manager is totally responsible for the safety of all of the performers and making sure that the, there's no water there's nothing slippery on the stage because that could be a really dangerous thing for if suddenly you've got someone out who's doing I don't know ballet and all of the kicks in the world yeah. and they slip over on the feathers that someone left earlier it's, it's really important yeah you yeah. can you could ruin a dancer's complete career absolutely like yeah, it actually yeah. is massive it's yeah. very true and as well as being a stage manager on the cabaret scene in London uh, what else do you do Stormina is it Stormina or Stormina it, <laughs> I think when you say the full name it always sounds better Stormina teacup but right. it is Stormina if you're saying if it's my a, name right okay so we adapt <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know it's Stormina teacup's a bit clunky Anyway, um, I'm a, I am a primary school teacher yeah. for my sins. <laughs> How long have you done that for? Um, well, I qualified about eight years ago, I think, but I tend to every so often flounce off. I can't do this anymore. Um, and I go and do something else for a couple of years. I always mm. end up coming back because London is hard without a steady job. Well, being a primary t school teacher must be must have its moments I mean I'm, I've never been one but I've talked to a lot of teachers over the years yeah. and, and they all say the same thing which is it's just you get more and more admin piled yeah. on to you on top of the actual teaching and caring for the children yeah. and the rules keep being changed on you by is it Ofsted the, the, no it's just the government it's government. the DfE yeah. um, but then on top of that I'm in a so if you're in an academy, your academy can change their rules. I'm in the a local authority school, so we get, you know, all these things from the local authority as well. So it's, but it's mostly from your senior le senior leadership team, from the ones who are sort of piling on admin because they've got to um, justify their role and what they're doing to improve the school. We've always got to be improving at all times. There's never a moment where they just sort of go doing a really good job like, that, that never happens it's never good enough wow yeah. and that's sort of the, the thing that's quite hard for me is your your practice is constantly being picked apart and I, I don't yeah I think we should always be trying our best 
and things but it is that sort of someone comes in to watch one of your lessons very frequently and they're sort of this is what you should have done better this you know you did these things well but do this better these right. are the areas yeah and that's constant that happens many times a year so have you ever done an act or been in a show on stage i know you're on stage as a stage manager but have you ever been part i i don't want to be insulting when i say part of the show because obviously you are part of the show when i work with you but do you know what i mean one of the artists what have i performed yeah i very infrequently perform okay um i don't enjoy it terribly Um, i really enjoy putting acts together but then i spend a lot of time criticizing myself afterwards it takes me a long time to get over that but um i've got one act that i really enjoy which is my storm in a teacup act where i come on and transform myself into a giant teacup (laughs) and make tea in my giant teacup skirt and then i (laughs) And I absolutely love this act. I remember <laughs> when I first saw it, I was just like, you're in a teacup. <laughs> I was like, that's okay. amazing. So first of all, I have to ask, how much cleanup is there at the end of this act? <laughs> there is quite a lot. Right, you <laughs> see. But it's all costume. It's yeah. all costume because all of the, the, the bra I take off becomes the milk jug. Okay. And it, so it all comes off. The skirt becomes the teacup. And then I. So I have, this would be classed as a burlesque act. It is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so Stormy in the Teacup, uh, be, well, I suppose began life as part of Luscious yeah. uh, Burlesque course. So yes, that's I how, did. Yeah. So Emily taught Stormy. Yeah. Okay. And uh, have you done any other training courses in your adult life uh, or just burlesque, Stormy? No, just burlesque. I'm okay. not, I'm very unperformy. Because, uh, and you said it's because you, you don't enjoy it very much? Is that what you said? I I do enjoy it, but it's the criticism. It's when you watch your video back and you think, well, that wasn't good and that wasn't good. So it's a self-criticism yes. thing. Yes, yeah. 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 But you enjoy the process, so the actual kind of, Making the costume, yeah, doing the storyboards of the yeah. ideas and listening, choosing the music and feeling that side of things. I so. do. And I also I find it so collaborative as well. We're in such a beautiful network of people who will really help and inform each other. So if you say I'm thinking of this new act and I think, you know, would can I send you the video because I'd really like, you know, this one's comedy and I have no comedy background, you send it to someone and they will look at it for you and help you out or someone will help you with your costume and I just love that so much all these really strong world it's particularly the women in burlesque who really really support each other a lot yeah so. as as a primary school teacher see I mean I I don't have children and um, my nieces are quite old now and uh, they don't live nearby anyway and I don't know have many friends with little kids so I don't really have much of a handle at all on what <laughs> what primary school is like anymore <laughs> and, but I do read things in the paper and I sort of see things on social media and stuff and uh, uh, and I, uh, I my hunch is please tell me if I'm wrong that um, the arts are being affected or removed or sidelined in schools is that the same for primary schools or is that um, right yeah absolutely I think it depends how you're thinking of the arts so we do a lot at my school we have a specialist art teacher who does one day a week okay um so over the year the children will have one half term of specialist art teaching which is quite that's great but that's mostly to do with sort of their coordination and um they do that through learning about different artists and replicating those styles and things like that but but a lot of it does come down to I think their their coordination, their use of colour, things like that, academic ideas around art. Okay. <laughs> and then um we also have a specialist music teacher who's brilliant, but again that's there are specific skills, so it's rhythm and um those sorts of things. We do a lot of singing. I think for me where where the arts is really missing for children is drama. We don't tend to teach I mean drama there are things they're supposed to do and it's largely the nativity play tick. Oh. We did some drama. Oh they, god, that's they it for the year. Script. Oh god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it for the year, seriously? In terms of performance mostly, yeah. Wow. Um because you know, they learn to script. 
even though most of them were sheep or cows <laughs> or something, and yeah. they just did the singing. Um, but you're, we're supposed to do drama within English, but we're now teaching them so much grammar, so much spelling, that we don't necessarily have time to take apart the books that we're reading and really look, get into the characterization and things. It's really funny. I was talking to Pi the Mime mm-hmm. um, because I want. I really wanted to try and get them in to come and do some activities um, because they. I, I was at a, one of your summer workshops. Uh-huh. Which is yeah. Another thing that uh-huh. Little Lady Lushes <laughs> offers, um, <laughs> run by Pi, and we did some really amazing, great, fun activities. And I was sort of thinking these would be great for the children rather than just ripping them off. Um, I'll see if I can get some funding to have Pi come in. (laughs) Um, And I was explaining the sort of current drama things we do. And there's there's this thing, uh, it's called a... Oh, man. Consciousness Alley. Consciousness Alley. alley. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so... As I and well, as we teach it, I'm, this may be wrong. I'm worried about teachers listening to this. This is awful. Um, well, we haven't said your real name, and we're not going to, <laughs> <laughs> or the name of your school. So don't worry. <laughs> Any bad reviews you get, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> angry teachers. Consciousness Alley. Yeah. So if there's a dilemma w- within the book that the character has to sort of come across, you might ask one of the children to be that character in role. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other children will have to think of advice for that character the children then form an alley by connecting their hands (laughs) and then that child who's acting that role will walk through the alley while the children whisper their advice to it (laughs) now i hate doing that as a teacher i I hate it it. (laughs) and i think it's terrifying potentially (laughs) for children i hadn't thought about that (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah. it might be yeah because yeah my instant reaction was like that sounds horrifying (laughs) i would hate that if i I was like i suppose it could be really scary yes we do a lot of interviewing in role as well so imagine that you're the duck in pumpkin soup then we do that a lot um and you've just stormed out of the cabin and you won't talk to your friends anymore because they wouldn't let you stir the soup I mean, that's a legit problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's an everyday issue that we have yeah, to cope yeah. with. <laughs> um, we then do a press conference, and that can be really terrifying as well. So you always have to be really conscious of which child you're choosing. But all of these activities, it's usually one child who gets that experience of being in role. I'm a bit... Oh, I have to say, I'm a bit... Uh, I don't know how I feel... I, in fact, I know exactly how I feel about this. <laughs> I, I don't like the fact that we seem to have sort of, you know, ticked the drama box by actually sort of stealing from English time, do you know? Yeah. Where, where, yeah. Uh, and, and maybe it's scary. Maybe these things are terrifying because they're sort of like thrown on them when they think, oh, I thought we were reading a book yeah. today. You know, yeah. I don't, we need priming before we do mm. getting up and hot seating, essentially, yeah. Yeah. some yeah, of the stuff you're talking scary, about. Yeah. I just... Uh, that that upsets me. It upsets me for English and drama. It feels mm. like both are going to lose. I, I think that drama is a really important part of reading. Okay. But I think that the problem I have with it is that it's, it's all largely being sidelined. Um, and we don't have time for the children to actually have a read of the book and then explore the things within that because we've got to be rewriting this book. And the emphasis is on writing. And I was thinking about it on the way here... Um, I was thinking about the, the 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 sort of very specific drama we do. We have to write scripts, play scripts. And so the way we do that is we take a storybook and we get them to write it as a script. Right. And that's a lot of the... That's very difficult yeah. for children who are seven. They find it really difficult to pick out the speech. Mm. And I, so I, I'm in year three, so seven to eight-year-old children. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they... Yeah, that that's quite hard, but they're not actually getting any of the emotion of any of it. They're not. Yeah, what's the purpose up. of that exercise? I haven't. I don't think yeah. I've understood the purpose <laughs> of the yeah, exercise. I was like, what? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's but just I, on the curriculum, and you've got yeah, to do it. It's there. The children have to write scripts. It's yeah. it's about exploring different genres and mediums. So when are the okay? Because um, we did. I did this something kind of similar in primary school, where we were given a sentence to start off with. And then we had to write our school play. 
basically at the end of it. I think I, I must have been about 10 or 11. Um, a girl recently found the programme from it um, in her attic. Um, so it has, it has, uh, the demon, oh, there's something about Smith Street anyway, I can't remember the full day. But yeah, I ended up being, so everybody had to have a role in it. So we all had to contri- contribute to different parts of the story. So it started off with, we got given the line and then we then kind of created from there. And um, somehow, by the end of it, I was the, um, we had, there was a a game show at the end, and I was the assistant. (laughs) That was my role in the way. But it was interesting, because we all got to kind of make up something, and then we all, everybody had their own part as well. So it wasn't Mm. just like the nativity where you're like a sheep. There was like, you generally had to kind of create your own character within it. We do do an assembly Every yeah. class does an assembly every year. Right. That's another thing. And last year I did get my class. Some of them wrote a bit of it themselves. But it was... It and was does that... Good. So that's something they've written which they then get up and share? Usually the teacher has written it. Right. Or found it online. But they've got to say it out loud yeah. in front of others. They've got to present it, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there'll be a song at the end. Cause uh, right. I was going to ask cause how much music is involved in, in your work <laughs> with these young people. Well, we have an... We have an absolutely incredible specialist music teacher in our school who's absolutely really fantastic. I love sitting in on his lessons because he's he just can't he's in about three different bands (laughs) and he's just doing this. This is his day job. And it's just his attitude. I remember sitting in a he was giving out song sheets and he just clearly couldn't be bothered. So he just threw them into the the carpet where the children were sitting and then just sat there and waited for them to sort themselves out as they all fought and elbowed their ways with these song sheets. Right. Um, (laughs) It's just fantastic. Um, But they do, so they're doing mini bands at the moment, so they're learning to use... um, garage band on the ipad oh yeah and, oh, okay. and writing their own music um yeah i know it's really amazing <laughs> like, at the age of seven years old seven. yeah the yeah. whole sc- across the whole school are doing i still that, struggle with which garage I, band. Think, <laughs> I think is largely because he can't be asked to plan <laughs> <laughs> loads of different lessons. so i mean <laughs> On a personal level, you think this guy's amazing. I mean, on a professional level, is he any good? No. (laughs) No, no, I think he's brilliant because he's so old school. Right, right. That he's just sort of, it's difficult to explain, but he's really honest with the children. He's really, um, it it takes me back to teachers and their attitude when I was at school. He's not over-nurturing these children at all. He's just... You know, I'm here to do a job. Here's yeah. the song sheets. You've got to find them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's super sarcastic as well, which I really enjoy, and they don't notice, which is brilliant. <laughs> so, is you, is over nurturing an issue? Do you think for uh, you know what our kids are exposed to, mm. as far as you know teaching I, is concerned? This is a really difficult issue for me because mm. I'm a very nurturing person. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to. I think that the the nurturing nature of primary school came about because of some really horrible issues within primary school. Sure. And in particular, there are a lot of children who were highly neglected. Right. Um, and so we had this culture developed of us being a lot more responsible for the children's well-being. Yeah. And I think that that's important. I think the reason that I find it slightly an issue is because I'm in a very affluent, my school is in a very affluent part of London where in general all of the children are quite over nurtured. They're all, every parent believes that their child is very special and very, you know, all of these concerns. I I don't think that his um, emotional well-being is being taken into account a lot of the time and, you know, that often is a bit of an issue. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm 45. I mean, I don't remember the s- sentences like that ever being yeah. heard at, when I was at primary school from anybody, from any class at all, you know. Uh, and I mean classes in upper class, middle class, not yeah. class two, class three. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, nobody cared about. I don't think it was a thing, you know, someone's emotional well-being. You either passed maths or you failed yeah. maths or yeah. you were late yeah. and you went to detention. You know, that was what school was Pretty, like. Yeah. See, now if you're failing maths, we would have to look at all of the reasons why, which is 
you know, it's, it's good. It yeah. is good. But yeah, I'm not got, saying my childhood was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good Lord, no. Um, so we would have to look at the data around that. We would have to look at the book and see what they were doing. We'd have to uh, question my teaching style, whether it was working for that child. We would have to look at all of the Maybe they're issues. just a lazy little shit that haven't done their work. <laughs> <laughs> but the number of times you want to say that in these <laughs> meetings, um, and you want to say that to parents as well, but, but, um, but the... The problem with that is that that parent's got one child or two or three children. Yeah. I've got 30 children in my class. And so yeah. it's absolutely exhausting. And I, I'm not saying for a second that I wouldn't, I don't want to be doing it. It's just, it's really hard. Yeah. But there are, there are only so many hours in the day. Yeah, and yeah, you've only absolutely. got so many pairs of hands. And, yeah. you know, and there's only so much one person can be asked to take on. Absolutely. I find it so interesting because people still think that teachers work from 9 till 3.30. Is that laughable to you? Absolutely. (laughs) I cannot imagine it. Parents, when I leave school at night, I I usually walk through the park to get home and the the parents are always shocked to see me leaving at 6 o'clock at night. Are you still there? I'm like, yes, because school just shut. I got thrown out. (laughs) I've I've still got work to do, but... Yeah, no. um, the and caretaker they, has forced me to. Yeah, <laughs> and they they literally cannot believe it. So it stands to reason from the stuff we've been discussing that something as you know as education and our culture has changed and and, and built up since you know when I was at school in 1982 or whenever it was. Um, the, there's there's a lot more demand from teachers and on uh, and on Ofsted and all of those other you know bodies and stuff like that and so th- other things are being pushed out. So it stands to reason that something gets yeah goes by the wayside gets pushed out. I've always always been really really angry that it's the arts. Yeah. Oh, I've really hit my microphone really. Yeah, heavy <laughs> you feel very passionate. I do <laughs> very passionate about that. It's the arts that get pushed out. It is a yeah. music drama um, dance. Oh yeah. Any dance in your school? Uh, it, as part of PE, yes, they're doing yeah. dance. Again, at the so it's got swallowed up into another thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> when, and also it's when the weather turns bad and they're forced into the hall. What can we do with them safely in the hall? We'll do. So dance. only yeah. if all other options are closed <laughs> and they are, you just said the word forced into it. <laughs> yeah. Will dance happen I, for a child? Yeah. That, dance that's is terribly sad to yeah. me. It is on the curriculum. Right. It is there. It's part of children's okay. development in terms of their hand-eye coordination, their sort of bodily abilities and things. Right. So again, it's it's been ac- academ- ac- ac- academized. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's very much the developmental reason for it. There's there's very little in the curriculum that's there for the love of anything. Yeah. So we. I remember when I was in year six, I had a very um, I don't know forward-thinking hippie teacher um and we did the cha-cha-cha we had a dance teacher come in because she just was really she really wanted to do we used to do pilates for PE and things because she quite fancied it um (laughs) but there's nothing like that in my school certainly um it's not on the curriculum that children should be learning actual dances or anything it's very much rhythm do you think they should um I haven't put a huge amount of thought into that. Mm. Um, I mean, is it is it that? I mean, what do you reckon, Emily? Is is it frivolous the idea of dance on a daily basis for school children? Are there better things that children can be doing? Is that a waste of time and resources? And yeah, I suppose that's possibly one of the reasons why it's it's not seen in schools anymore. I, I, I I'm just trying to think back. We and um, this is why I love Kayleys is because we used to do a lot of like kind of Kaylee style dancing at school as well. Um, so we used to have to do. Um, there was a point where we had to learn set dances and things. And it was interesting actually. The other day I was listening to a podcast with Kevin Clifton, and they were talking about. Um, men uh, dancing. Oh, he's okay. one of the strictly, strictly professionals. Right. Yeah, and um, yeah, they were talking about the um, the whole like what's 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 changed because um, back when you think about old music halls and things like that, how people used to meet um, and go to tea dances and things like that, um, and that's how a lot of couples met mm. to begin with was um, dancing the jive or something like that. Um, it's like when did it change that 
men were seen as um, less of a man for dancing. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I guess on uh, at some point it would have been um, actually something to be proud of, the fact me. that you could do the polka and do the cha-cha-cha, and, and that got you the girl. Yeah. And is it maybe dance classes stopped happening in schools? I don't know if... Did they used to have, have school, school dancing? Because did they know. used to have school dancers? Um, maybe that's something... So, I don't know, that, that, that's just made me kind of think of, of that side of things. Because I, I do understand that there's a finite amount of, you know, hours in the day mm. and resources, but I'm just, I just, I don't think they are frivolous, the arts. I think that yeah. they're, I, for us, mm. uh, mere mortals on this earth, I think that our life can be, when I say enriched, it makes it sound like you've just put like a little bit of tinsel on top of something which is, which is uh, more solid and more, uh, meaningful than the tinsel itself but I really I, I don't know we were interviewing uh, you know Roman Ackley from the cabaret scene we were interviewing him the other day and uh, and I said to him what would you be without the arts and he said 60% of me would be missing well so, so why aren't we doing this every day you know yeah. and it's called the right place to do it if if we are trying to do it every day you know I think um it, it's quite hard to teach that kind of thing right because you, you, it's it's very hard within the the system that we have to let children explore things yeah. for themselves. So largely, a lot of what we do is teaching the set thing. So I can teach you about Picasso, but I can't teach you to I don't know, feel Picasso. Do you know, <laughs> right. Art is an expression of ourselves, isn't it? And so it's quite it's quite hard to know. Children won't necessarily look at the art and and understand it they'll just sort of have but maybe they would if we taught, taught if there was enough time yeah, exactly yeah. that's the thing it's the time of things yeah. I think so much of what we're teaching them is the wrong thing at Do the you? moment I think there's when I look at the, the maths curriculum and the English curriculum I think we're forcing too much too soon and mm. what we should be doing is reading the stories and using them to help us understand the world you know, using pumpkin yeah. soup when the duck argues with the squirrel and the cat. How does the duck feel? Why has that happened? How could we have handled that better? You know, these sorts of things rather than why did the duck choose to say these words? What kind of sentence is that? Look at the punctuation. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, could we improve this sentence with a more interesting adjective? You know, <laughs> I still haven't even known what an adjective is, but that's probably because I was dancing my whole childhood. <laughs> so, what about play, then, oh. Stormina? You work with children every day. Um, how much time? I mean, presumably they still have play group, a uh, play, you know, a playground and and yeah, break times and stuff. Like, but how much play is involved in the day for for children that you? that you know these days is it a thing? <laughs> your face is just saying everything right now <laughs> oh um they have 15 minutes of playtime in the morning okay they have a 50 minute lunch break for lunch and then play and that's it yeah. okay. <laughs> you don't um, get afternoon break anymore no no <gasps> afternoon break uh, oh do you God. see I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, so uh, again, we, we go back to sort of the 80s when I went to school, yeah, uh, children uh, skipping yeah. and hopscotch and people mm -hmm. playing football or being beaten up in my case. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, uh, for, for the 95 percent of uh, the children um, being outside and moving yes. and interacting with each other. Yeah. Uh, is that the case or is everyone on a, on a device or staying in or what? No, no devices. Uh, we have different, we, we've got quite a nicely developed playground and a lot okay. of schools now will do. So we've got the football pitch, we've got the hopscotch, all of that is all painted on and we've also got a really beautiful woodland area oh, wow. that they all run around yeah. in. Um, and a teepee that has board games in it for the quieter children. Well, that sounds beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, I wish I went to that school. That sounds lovely. <laughs> Lots of equipment. We have um, space hoppers and things like that. Limited number of them that we have to keep shouting at the year sixes to let the little ones play yeah. on them. Mm. But, um, <laughs> so that sounds like you're set up for a lot of uh, a really nice nice play there. yeah they have lovely play yeah but there but was a moment when I asked the question play. about play where you sort of I I just feel like it's very beneficial the 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 much younger children 
and I am I have a very sort of hippie view Montessori Steiner view of education because I unfortunately did an education degree before I became a teacher which is a huge mistake <laughs> like, <laughs> never ever learn about the thing is it too idealistic for the reality <laughs> of the situation it's too expensive, it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is how we should be teaching this is how you're actually going to have to teach yeah it's, okay. it's literally like that yeah. um so for the children who are in reception they first start they do so much of what they learn is unstructured so they'll be playing the majority of the time they're at school. Okay. Um, and it's brilliant. You yeah. Know, the games that they have, they some of them are structured. You learn so much in a mud kitchen. <laughs> you know, you you're you're learning it yourself, um, and that makes it more, far more meaningful. And yeah. and and they have a bit of that in year one. They'll maintain a bit of that, and then that's over. Um. So by the time a child is six and seven that will have finished their learning through play is over then. right now everything is structured and more and more schools are bringing that structured learning into reception as well okay so more and more of their time is we must write something we must learn these spellings these phonics this counting activity and it is still quite fun but the the writing really bothers me because they they end up doing more writing than reading which is it's the wrong way around and Mm -hmm. then you you find that later I find it very counterproductive because by the time they're in my year group we now have to start teaching specific spelling lessons grammar lessons and you think if we just spent this time reading yeah. They'd pick up the spellings. <laughs> like yeah. they, they would learn it, them it's eventually. It's how I learned to spell. Yeah. I, I read a lot as a child. And, yeah, uh, too, yeah. At home, voraciously, really. Mm. And, and yeah, it's there in front of you. Yeah. yeah. I suppose with reading as well, reading first, you'll, you'll expand your vocabulary yeah. as well. So that means that they're exposed to more words. Exactly. But the way we do it, we have to expand their vocabulary by making them learn words by rote. So it's sort of just, it's counterproductive. Mm. Yeah. It's less fun and it leaves less time for play and the arts. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's, I mean, this is all my opinion. I yeah. don't. Oh God, of course. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's only ever one, one's opinion. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there are people that may disagree with uh, what the three of us are each uh, yeah. offering. But yeah, yeah, that's what's so interesting about talking to different people every time we, we meet. What could, is, I mean, is it always money? Is it always money that's the issue? Is there anything that you think could be changed easily without it costing anything? I wonder about this a lot because I think the new curriculum that came in in 2014, it moved everything forward by at least a year. Um, I think it was more like two years, but most people sort of think it was about a year. Um, A couple of years ago, I brought in a piece of work that I had done when I was in year two and I showed it to the year two class I was teaching at the time and they tore it to shreds (laughs) they were so cruel about it um and they they, where were your adjectives where and this was in my record of achievement this has been a piece of work that the teacher (laughs) felt was good and I sort of thought about it and I thought was I a late bloomer or what what was I've got two degrees um and half a master's degree I'm not you know I'm not a dunce um was it was it the curriculum was it me I'm not really sure but yeah definitely things have and actually no it it had been a piece of year four work that's right and the year twos didn't like it um so it's it's really interesting yeah and I think that there's it's a mixture of money money is probably a I mean I think smaller class sizes would make a huge difference to everyone's experience and that's the expense yeah but the other thing is the the politicisation, mm. the the fact that whoever's the uh, secretary for education, the minister for education, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they need to be justifying what they're doing, mm. and so a lot of it is in the results they're getting. So they need to be striving for standards, and it's all about standards and standards are slipping or standards are improving or whatever it is. And so because of that, that everything is under such tight control. And I wonder about it a lot because I think in general this new new curriculum is quite old now, five years old, but it's it's very unpopular. But I think if I if if I was education secretary and I said to teachers, Do you want this curriculum at this point? We're probably a bit 
like, yeah, we're used to it now. Please do not <laughs> increase our workload Don't again. Don't change yeah. it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder about that, but I do think that it needs to be loosened a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I sometimes uh, give talks at women's institutes and when I do, I go to, uh, you know, the middle of uh, darkest Essex and a little old lady will come and collect me from the nearest train station because I don't drive. And often they're teachers, people who then become, so that's, this is your future, uh, people <laughs> who then get to become women's institute board members. Um, and I always have really nice, interesting chats with these women who I never see again, but they're always lovely and interesting. And often they're teachers. And I was talking to one who, um, I guess she's 70 now, something like that. So she was a teacher for many years and she said there came a point where um the structure of what was being asked of you by the government by the you know governing bodies just meant that there was no room for any I guess creativity from her point of view you know you couldn't just think to yourself and she said I used to I used to go to school and and think right I will teach, we'll play with water all morning mm. and we'll find out yeah. what, what, what we can learn from that, yeah. you know. So how much, how much creativity is there in what you do as a primary school teacher? Or would you like there to be more? I would love there to be more. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we have all of our planning. We do our own planning. Right, okay. Um, which is a huge amount of our workload is planning. So obviously we're using last year's a lot um so that's sort of all set but in terms of just today we'll learn about water that never happens because there's no freedom you've got all of your things you need to tick off that you've taught the children yeah. at some point in their school career they may have a lesson on learning about water but it has to be structured because you've got specific outcomes that they need to achieve and that's the sort of the big problem with it i find yeah so the luxury of 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 opening a, you know a pandora's box of mm. water and water play and just how does that feel and cold yeah. water and warmer water and then the, the idea of what that might or might not bring up mm. that that luxury of time and and just exploration it doesn't seem like there's any room in this current world of teaching no not past nursery and reception right. and i mean different schools will be different yeah as yeah. well and you said montessori school and another oh, one yeah. earlier on didn't you definitely steiner, steiner. schools mm. but even within other state schools they may do their their teaching and learning differently um but the bottom line is always what you've got to tick off and and we all have a lot of schools will have different programs that we do. So we use something called Target Tracker, which is where all of these out learning outcomes will be and we have to tick them off against every single child individually. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That takes time yeah. as well. Time. Is it, is it an app? It sounds like an app. <laughs> it should be no, software. <laughs> is it on your iPhone? <laughs> no. We actually had training in it this week and he was showing us the app and it was a lot more clunky than just doing it on your desktop. Oh, right. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It is some software. So they need it's... to improve on that. <laughs> there are different ones. Like yeah. It just depends. Yeah, Does it matter though? I mean, I'm banging on about, you know, what, what school isn't like anymore and what I remember it being like and what people told me teaching used to be like. But does it matter that it's changed? I mean, is it, do you think it's damaging to children, uh, the lack of creativity? I talk about this with um, colleagues a lot and mm. a lot of us, certainly in my school, feel that we are implicit in the torture of children. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we've used those words. Like, we feel like... And and so we will do. I mean, you're laughing, but yeah. <laughs> implicit in the torture. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's having a huge impact on mental health within mm. children. Not as young as my class, I don't think, but we do have a lot of very anxious children a lot of the time. Um, I think it's changing their attitude to learning in a really negative way because we're so. so everything is trying to get the right answer trying to tick off that box mm -hmm. children aren't as confident anymore to have a go and get things wrong and now we're having to teach that we're having to teach persistence and um problem solving and things like that or, or sorry like good attitudes to problem solving as specific skills because the children have lost it through their school experience we oh. do mindfulness at my school now as a way of trying to counteract the um mental health issues that we're giving the children i think i think the mindfulness <laughs> should be replaced with dancing quite yeah. yeah 
I did some really, yeah. I did some really nice mindfulness lessons last term that yeah. I was really proud of. <laughs> but I, I totally agree. I think some physical things. I'm also trying to teach them about trees. Oh, but we're okay. trying to figure out how to fit that within the curriculum yeah. because believe it or not massive climate crisis yeah teaching children about the environment isn't in there that's so not uh, oh and that's we're trying yeah to, we're trying, <laughs> I, it does fit within certain topics and things so we're trying to sort of figure out find moment, a way to push you yeah, on it in how to how to put it in yeah, yeah. but yeah wow oh. <laughs> well, yeah it's uh time checking again <laughs> i've been letting things go um so to kind of wrap up a little bit, to well, to start the wrapping up, because we're moving on. Um, so what, what would you say you're passionate about within the arts? Um, is there a particular part of the arts that you feel passionate about, like creative? You know, yeah, I know you sew and things like mm. that. So Personally? Not personally, yeah. Okay, well, I hate the theatre, so... <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad we've got that out in the (laughs) open. I was worried about coming on that you might ask me. (laughs) (laughs) About (laughs) theatre. Yeah. Um, I I don't... I mean, I I love our bit of the arts. Yeah. I love cabaret. Um, I'm into no-fuss bits of the arts. I don't like the pretentiousness of it. I don't like going to an art gallery and... And having to understand all of the background about it, I like being able to go and just yeah, I like that one, I like that one. Yeah, you know, that yeah. one makes me feel in this way. I think that it's really. Um, I, I actually, I'm in a, I'm in the Tate Britain at the moment. I don't know if you saw what, the you picture. Personally? I am. Yeah, a, a picture, picture a photo of, you. of me. Oh, yeah. Really? Um, it, it was it was um, quite quite famous. Uh, oh gosh, Steve McQueen's year three children project so he took a picture of well he didn't do it personally a very nice photographer came to our school and took a class picture of us um and it was supposed to be every child in year three in london and that's a huge exhibit in there at the moment and i went to the opening and steve mcqueen was there and it was all very fluffy (laughs) you know and it was all oh year three is such an important part of a child's development and and you know teachers you do such a wonderful job and blah 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 and I find it quite frustrating because I think well I'm not sure that this is how I choose to be honoured I'd like a pay rise if (laughs) I'd like Steve McQueen to have taken the photo (laughs) I did meet him but um I did you do any work whilst you were watching him (laughs) why is this attributed to him if someone else took the photo it was his idea oh well well, 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 I've had ideas (laughs) he he found a picture of his, his his year three class photo and it got him thinking okay. and so but um <laughs> I just I don't understand how that suddenly his art <laughs> <laughs> I have the most wonderful ideas but if you don't get out of bed and do them then you know, they're not yours you didn't do them I, did you? I am curious to find out if he got how much that is worth mm. as well yeah. But, um, but and you're not getting any of that. No, you? No. The model, yeah. No. But um, but it is it it is interesting to me to see what meaning that has because it's a nice exhibit. But also the photos are piled up to the ceiling, so if you take a school trip in there, a huge amount of the children won't be able to see themselves. Right. Yeah. As well, you can't see a lot. Of the, we're right at the bottom. We're really lucky. <laughs> so if we do a school trip, which we are booked to do one, but we're trying to get out of doing it. <laughs> So my mum used to take me when I was quite young. My mum used to come, bring up, bring me up to London and take me to the Royal Academy or to the Tate mm. or something like that. And we would you know, just wander around and look at the pictures. And my mother doesn't really know yeah. anything about art. And if she yeah. did, well, she might do, but she didn't share it with me. I mean, sometimes she would say, oh, "Look at the light mm-hmm. on that one," and that's about the extent of it. And you know, it was just the point is that she took me, yeah. and mm. I got to have a look and, and make up my own mind. And I, I mean, very seldom did an art gallery trip go by where we weren't, we didn't end up for a brief time at least standing next to a different sort of mother and child. And, and this mother was the sort of like, and if you just understand the gradient of this yeah. lady and, and what Vermeer's is doing here in his later years yeah. to a, like a six year old. And, and my, you know, my mother is very, very outspoken. And <laughs> should I not to get into a fight with her going, oh, just let the kid bloody look at it for yeah. and let them make up their own. 
own mind. Yeah. You know? Do we need to understand that this is his blue period? We um, we used to do Van Gogh in my old school. And right. so we took it, it was, it was a huge seven form entry school. So we would take three classes at a time to the National Gallery. Yes, I think. Is that where the big Van Gogh Ah, I'm not sure. Somewhere where there's uh, loads yes. of Van Gogh. Yeah. And yes. one of the there, teachers, yeah. I absolutely loved this, got three classes of children to go up and so we had to kill time. <laughs> and he did this okay. every year. He did the same thing. They'd all come and sit in front of one of the famous Monets that's in there. And he would talk about the Monet. Okay. And loads of tourists would come by and, and you knew they were listening as well as he talked about this Monet. I'd ask him afterwards to say, oh, that, that was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, made it all up. Entirely <laughs> nonsense. Wow. And, but the thing is, all these people, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it didn't matter. The children aren't going to remember it, but they enjoyed looking at the picture. And, and hearing they, the story that's yeah, with it. Yeah. And the story about, you know, why the painting was this and about the, the artist's life and things. Mm. And none of it really matters. Well, I guess, you know, even if it was all made up, if he's saying some words that are sparking something in your yeah. synapses as you look yeah. at a picture, yeah. then it's, I don't know, helping you have a, a different, a unique experience. That's yes. A, you know. It's promoting an enjoyment. And what's wrong with that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what it all should be. It should all be entertaining. No, there's no yeah. tick boxing going on no. there. No. It's far too luxurious. <laughs> yeah. It's like from everything you've said, I kind of get the feeling that what you think is important about the arts and how it helps development is the actual exploration as yes. opposed to the ticking of the boxes. Yeah. So that's okay. Your takeaway. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm taking from this. I honestly <laughs> have no idea what the answer is. I mean, yeah. if you said to me, all right, I'll go into that school and sort it out then. I mean, I, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to unless I was given a lot of money and a lot more teachers and probably more space yeah. as well. But yeah. but I do think that there's something wrong and there's a, like an imbalance, if you were. And I just... I just, you know, want to fly a little flag for dance drama. <laughs> yeah, I, think I saw an absolutely fantastic um, children's version of oh, Twelfth Night right. done by a drama company. It starred, goodness gracious, in her actory day job role. This is a burlesque yeah. performer that yeah. we it know. Is. Yeah. 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 She um, also guest teachers at Lotus as well. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> This isn't a clique. Um, <laughs> but I went to see her doing an open rehearsal of that and it was absolutely fantastic. But it's just funding. When you say children's version, they were in it. Uh, so it was it, it was really amingly well put children. together. Mm. It was yeah, it was four children and they had five or six actors and they did the main parts of the story, but every so often they would break and get the children involved. Oh. So ah. we were the people of Athens and we had to cheer for the different things and and um and also you know the fairies they chose volunteer fairies and volunteers this and that and it was absolutely wonderful and um i and then funnily enough we had another one and i don't want to moan about a different company that i don't know the name of so i can't but we had another one come into my school and do 12th night and it was just one man so the the um and obviously he didn't perform it but he went through different parts of the story with different classes throughout the day and then at the end of the day we all came for a big performance where we all did our different parts that we'd learned in our workshop yeah um and obviously the budget on that is much lower you've only got one actor yes, yes. yeah so it's a much more cost effective way of doing it however <laughs> um in year three we had been the mechanicals so we were learning about the mechanicals. This is Midsummer Night's Dream, the mechanicals. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry, yeah, not yeah. Twelfth Night. So. No, no, no. Sorry. I wondered if you were talking about a different No, it was story. the same play yeah. both times. Right, okay. And it was, yeah. We need to get more teaching the arts in primary school. <laughs> 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 These teachers haven't got a clue. They are absolutely right. Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, Hoisted on your own petard. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. And then... And it was the bit at the beginning where they're choosing the characters. So we had to play, there was a team of snouts and a team of bottoms. Right. And we had to be that emotion for that person. So bottom was very funny. and yeah. you know. Then at the end of the play, they didn't even do the play within a play. Oh. So the, our point in, within that play had been totally pointless. And the children didn't understand what it had to do with the story. Mm. Because it had nothing to do with the story. Yeah. 
And so that's the, that's the, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing it properly. Pay oh. five actors yeah. rather than one yeah. so that then at least they get to see the play within a play at the end. Mm. You can't, you couldn't have cut the mechanicals out of that, you know, that bit where you pick roles because yeah. you need a reason for Bottom to be in the forest. Well, yeah. Yeah. So you have to have it. But then I was trying to find on YouTube a version of the play within a play to show the children so that they would understand why they were there yeah. Yeah. and there wasn't anything appropriate you know it was all difficult language and things whereas the the thing I saw goodness gracious in they did them that play within a place so well that I understood it from when I'd been in it at school and hadn't <laughs> understood it oh. like the jokes were so funny it there was a lot of physical comedy in there it really worked yeah and this is the this is the thing if schools just had a little bit more money for those little extras or little luxuries, or whatever it was described as in the budget a few mm. years ago. Mm. Mm. But was it? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, he wanted money for little extras, but but schools are so scrunched that you know it's going to be paid for, used to pay for necessities. Right. Yeah. Yes. But if we had money for little things like that, it would make such a huge difference. Yeah. They it may really they would. may yeah. seem little, but yeah, yeah. yeah. so important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. I think that that's where we have to kind of call it. It's a, it's a rather somber way to end. <laughs> oh, oh, can I? Can I <laughs> oh, she's when, very excited. No, <laughs> when you texted me asking me to be on this podcast, the yes. example you gave, I was asking sort of what exactly you meant um, or what you wanted me to talk about. And you said, oh, you know, things like children learning to play the violin and oh, things yeah. like that. Can I make a personal plea that no more children ever learn to play the violin? <laughs> please. <laughs> Because those are always the worst assemblies. <laughs> to, you, sh- you should have to be 18 before you're allowed near a violin. Now, listeners, <laughs> you, you have listened to, to how hard, <laughs> diligently, and with how much care Stormina um, puts into her day job as a primary school teacher. Please, please, for all the primary school teachers around this great country of ours, no more violin. <laughs> no, it's awful. <laughs> what, what, what ukulele recorder was oh recorder's worse <laughs> <laughs> so now we're backtracking no music in school <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll leave it there yes. okay. <laughs> Thank you very much Stormina yeah, thank you tell people um, uh, do you want people to be able to contact you Oh, they can do at Stormy Nitty Cup on Instagram. And we, they may see you at Luscious Cabaret. Yeah, they will. Um, picking up things whilst I'm standing in front of you in a fascinator. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the one making the faces behind me. Yes, yeah, always. <laughs> always. That's what I do. Wonderful. And um, thank you, Storm in a Teacup. That was awesome and very interesting. It was actually kind of heartbreaking, <laughs> actually. I, feel, I, I mean, I, I knew that teachers had a hard job, but that was... <sighs> I need to go and have a lie down. So if you enjoyed that, <laughs> please do remember to rate and comment um, on iTunes and follow us on the old Spotify. You can also follow us and say hello or just tell us what you think of today's conversation on Twitter at Up Your Arts. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you to Keith on the buttons. Bless your heart, my darling. And hopefully come down and see us at Luscious Cabaret on the first Friday of every month. Luscious Cabaret at, at the, the Al- Al- Albany in Great Portland Street. There are two Albany theatres in London. Don't get them confused. The one near Great Portland Street tube is us. Thanks very much, Emily, a.k.a. Little Lady Luscious. And thank you, Paulus. Bye. Bye.